Terrific. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have people in every... Carter, where are you? <clears throat> Dennis, you're in Holland, I believe, right? Kathy, you're in Michigan. Pepper, you're in Alabama, maybe? South somewhere? Hey, Roger. Um, hey, uh, I'm going to... <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to... Uh, post this again. This was, we used this yesterday, but I'm probably not going to use this today, the, the fretboard. Kathy, you want to do me a favor, um, maybe save that link, and then if we, we want, we can post it um, again in the future, you know, if I refer to it or whatever, but I, because I, I had to go through my history to find, and I'm, I'm trying to find this one. This is what we did yesterday, and I'm trying to find, I forget what, where that is. I sent it yesterday. Um, I think I bookmarked it, but again, I, my bookmarks are all messed up, so I'm not sure where it ended up in my bookmarks, but that's the one we did. Uh, this is not the one I want. Let's see if I can find it. So I'm just going through my history from yesterday because I know I had the right um, diagram thing, you know, blank diagram that you guys can print up and we can fill out together. You can do it by hand if you don't have a printer handy, um, but we are going to uh, continue talking about, let's see. Where's this one? Diagram. Oh, maybe this one. Ah, this is it. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> Help me remember this one. I've got I've got it saved on my desktop, but I can't just drag a. There's the other one. Okay, so that's that's this one. Okay, the blank one of these. That's the link for that. Roger is. I mean, Roger is good to see you. Walter is there. You see Walter's. Kathy, um, Walter is uh, the drummer at my church. He's an amazing drummer, percussionist, world-class, uh, like seriously world-class. Like I'm a hack compared to him. And uh, he uh, um, he's going to start doing this too on his channel. He's going to start doing a live stream. So he's watching today to kind of see what I do and the fact that so much of what we do is my interaction with you guys. Um, and sometimes that that's not the video I would shoot if I were to sh sit down and shoot a video for my channel, but uh, but it's it's interesting if you if you're rewatching this and most people do on a like a laptop or an iPad or a, a, a PC of some kind, um, you're seeing the comments, so you see what I'm reacting to and everything. So, um, so I and Walter, I set Kathy as my administrator. She was um, she's been there pretty much every day except one day, and then we all worried about her. Like, where are you? And then she had messaged me on my Facebook. And I didn't even see it because I don't have notifications turned on. So we're all like, I hope Kathy's okay. <laughs> so, but I set her as administrator so she can kind of take care of some of the things like if someone says something that needs to be approved, and sometimes it's, it's a dirty word, and sometimes it's just somebody says, you know, is answering one of my questions like, what's the formula for a major scale? Um, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, like that. And something like that might need to be approved because it just looks weird. So, uh, let's see. Hey, Dan, you're back. Dan, Dan goes to Shepherd Church. Um, and uh, so he knows Walter's playing very well. Uh, let's see. Christopher, good to see you. Bob, good to see you. We're all, we're just, hey, Keith, good evening. Oh, good. You must be, well, you must be in England. Are you in England or in, in Keith, are you in Holland too? I've got a couple, a couple viewers from Holland. So we're going to continue uh, here in a minute. I'm just waiting for, we've got 19 on right now. So we need to get a little higher than that before I'll actually start the lesson, but we're going to, we're going to continue uh, talking about core theory and yesterday and today we, um, started applying it to the guitar, which is kind of the hard part on piano. Harmony and theory is really easy to see on the piano. Uh, and the funny thing is I've told you before the, like so much of what I've been teaching is stuff that I've taught a thousand times like the modes lessons we did. Um, if you go back, I think it's daily lesson number 13 is when I started the modes and it's in the title. So if you see all caps modes, you can start there, start on the first one, uh, start on the oldest one. And we, you, you learn about all the modes, uh, you know, Aeolian, Lydian, Phrygian, all that stuff. You learn about all that. And I will reference that here. Um, and so um, that you don't have to watch that. Uh, again, I always say, there's no quiz at the end of the week. So sometimes I'll say something that I'm like, look, this is 
I don't want you to get confused. I don't want your eyes to glaze over. I don't want you to, to worry uh, that, that you're not going to understand what I'm showing you if you don't understand everything, um, especially when it comes to applying to the guitar. This is where it's really tough for me because we've got multiple levels here of skill. We've got literally first week beginners and we have players like Dennis. I think I get the feeling that Dennis is a heavy metal god right? <laughs> are you, are you a, de a heavy metal guy in Holland? I'm not sure, but I was just checking out your Facebook page and I go, okay, this guy's a player. Um, Cause you're, I think you're the one that's always asking me the, uh, oh, my sound is low. Shoot. Boom. Fixed. Sorry. I was recording acoustics yesterday for, for a commercial and I was banging them out really hard and I turned down my mic. Oh my gosh. So now, now I'm killing you all. <laughs> Yeah, David, East End Natural Center, that's, uh, I mean, uh, Roger, Walter, that's David. <laughs> you can shorten that by David. D David's here almost every day. And David lives in New York City. And uh, I've been praying for him and his family and his situation. Uh, he's, he's got, David, I think you've got two parents in their 90s that you're taking care of in, in New York City. I mean, wow, that's, that's, you're a superhero, in my opinion. Um, sorry about the volume. I totally forgot. I, I need a checklist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a checklist because I'm bummed now that the first six minutes of this video was going to be really quiet and then all of a sudden it's going to get loud. But it's better now, right? Um, 87, mom is 92. Wow. She was a cradle robber. Um, okay. So we talked, about, um, we talked about chord theory. We're up to 28, 30. Oh, we got 30. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, we did. This was uh, a few days ago. I think, I forget. What did I say? Lesson 19 or something? This was chord theory. We took a major scale. We wrote it out two octaves of it. We numbered it. Okay. These little, what are called carrots, upside down Vs, show you where the half steps are. And so those are half steps and everything else is a whole step. So you don't need to assume that. We learned two, uh, two intervals, a major third and a minor third, and how they're comprised. And then what we did was we wrote the scale vertically and we built triads on each individual note. And we ended up with, with uh, seven different triads. And then we analyzed the triads, and then we learned that in, uh, in fact, I didn't do this before, um, but there were, in a diatonic scale, there are three different kinds of triads that occur naturally. A major, minor, a major third on a, uh, a minor third on top of a major third. How should I say that? Minor third, major third, um, and that's a major triad a minor third, major third, and that's a minor triad, and then a minor third and minor third, and that's a diminished triad. And of course, the, the fourth option, speaking in a binary term, would be my major, major, and um, that would be augmented. But augmented does not occur naturally within a diatonic scale. Okay, now I'm gonna hold this up so you can do a screenshot without my face if you need to. And I, as always, I, I encourage you to copy this on your own piece of paper in your own handwriting so that you can actually read it, but also, so that you have another lever, level and layer of learning this, okay? If you write it down, you're gonna, it's gonna be another part of your brain that's gonna turn on. Also, you'll notice that my wife took, took a wall to my head and I got, I, got a little, I got a little shorter, which is nice. So I don't think this is great. I, did, I may have done one side, I did one side. I think I may have done this side. I don't know, I'll have to do it again. But I went level two, <laughs> so, okay. Now, uh, then we did the next day, we added a seventh. So we just re kind of, it was redundant, re relearning, which actually is really great because I, I got to teach it again. We did the triads again, but then we did one more third on top of that and we ended up with seventh chords. So if you watch that video, I think that was day, what day was, so that 18, 19, see, 19, 20, and then 21, 22. So today's 23, right? Or did I mess up? I called this 23. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting lost. Okay. It was 18, 19. 18, 19 of the, so this was lesson 19. So if you want to watch this one, we, we took the triads. This is identical to the first lesson. We just added one more minor third and we ended up with a seventh chord. And when I had you number the scale for two octaves, okay, one through 15 here, I think a bunch of light bulbs came on. You went, wait a minute. Is that why they call it a ninth chord? Because it has a D in it? Boom. Is that why they call it a 13th chord? Because there's an A in it? Exactly. So that was kind of my point. Um, and this is a lesson that I've also taught many times, um, many, many, many times. In fact, oftentimes what I will do with this lesson, and I don't think we're going to do this because this is a, that, but I would do this, the, the triads, like these, all these four triads. You could do this if you want, um, but I would create, 
I would do a sheet where I create columns, 15 columns. I mean, four columns of 15 chords where I would do the all, all four triads in every key. So I would do C. So you'd have C major and then C minor, C diminished and C augmented and then C sharp, C sharp major, C sharp minor, C sharp. But the reason I'm not going to do that here is because normally when I would teach that with a student, I would make the student do all the work for in front of me and I could kind of steer them to, you know, to get the right answer if they weren't, if they were confused. However, <laughs> with sometimes we've had as many, I kid you not, we've had 63 people at one time on this channel, uh, on these live streams. So we're at 36 right now, seven thumbs up if you're keeping score. Um, and that's just too many. <laughs> As it is, it gets tough when I have you answer my questions and, and I'm like checking all your work and everything. So, okay, so that was the second lesson. Then we did two days on uh, the the uh, circle of fifths, which is cool because I got it all in order here in this book. I, we're literally creating a book. I'm going to have to order some more of these because I'm going to run out. I don't think I only, I think I just have the one. So I may have to run over to home, home uh, to the office club or something like that. But we did the sharps on one day of the circle of fifths. And we did the flats the next day of the circle of fifths. Okay, and you can watch those, um, and uh, if you want, um, and that was just so we we could kind of take the modes and take that to another level. But you guys did great. You all did great, and we learned something called tetrachords, which saved us a lot of time. Uh, and uh, that was one of those things I would say. There's no quiz at the end of the week, but the thing is, if I gave you a quiz at the end of the week, you could tell me what a tetrachord is. I guarantee it. So, okay. Uh, all right. I've got to, I'm going to just, before I get started, well, we're going to continue on in the next lesson. Um, and now we're kind of working with, di uh, with diagrams and we did, let's see, where do I have? Yeah. So I have what we did yesterday and we're going to add to that. And here's my whole point about saying that I've taught these, some of these lessons many, many, many times. Yesterday's lessons, yesterday's lesson was completely free form. I kind of thought about it the night before. I was like, how am I going to do this? And I think it went really, really well. I was I was seeing so many light bulbs come on. Yeah, Tetris chords. <laughs> yeah, I was seeing so many light bulbs come on yesterday. I was really pleased. Um, so uh, basically what we did was we took a C major scale. Um, on one string, whoops, that was a Lydian scale. And we played it on the A string. And then what we did was we played a major scale here, and then on the second, on the D string, we played a major scale, the C major scale, but starting on E, which you could think of because we studied modes, is a would be a Phrygian scale. So you've got so we ended up um, doing an entire. Let me get rid of the echo. I like it sometimes, but. Okay, and I think I can turn this back down. All right. Now, and then we took that that third, that E in this case, and we moved it up an octave and we came up with this. And I'm gonna hold up the sheet so you can see this. Okay. And I said there's a song uh the no, so no, it was The, the uh, Love Yourself by Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran uh, was actually played that way with just those with those shapes. And we call those tenths. If this is a third, one, two, three, three notes up in the scale, then this would be a tenth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In fact, if we go back to our lesson that we talked about where, where I wrote out the scale for two octaves, you know, we... we the light bulb that came on the other day was, um, you know, was, oh, that's why they call it a ninth chord. Or that's why they call it an 11th chord, 13th chord. That was, you know, I was, I was like, I knew that that light bulb would come on for you guys. I mean, we're going to get to those. Right now, we're just at seventh chords. and But now I want to apply it to your guitar before we move on to more theory, okay? Um, so, um, but basically, you can also consider this. This is a second C to E is a third, C to F is a fourth, C to G is a fifth. These are also the names of these intervals. C to B is a seventh, 
C to D is a ninth. C to E up here is an, a tenth. C to E here is a third, but C to E up here is a tenth. Okay, so that was something that um, that we talked about yesterday. So I'm almost, uh, and then we did fifths. So then we did, we because we, we wanted to get the triad up here. So we did the third, now we do the fifth. And so we, we ended up with something that basically power chords that were identical at every scale tone except the seventh tone. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all had a perfect fifth above them. And then when we got to the to the seventh, we needed we had a diminished fifth, and that was the only one that was kind of the different different one. Okay, okay. So this is what we did, and this I, I didn't really like the way this looks because it's just it's really hard. You can take a screenshot of that though, and without my face, and with my face if you need my face in there. <laughs> okay. So uh, this, you can see the first one is just the scale by itself here, just the scale on one string. And then here is the scale with the third above it on the next string, on the D string. Uh, so we have scale, uh, the C scale on the, uh, on the A string and essentially an E Phrygian scale at the same time on the D string, we created a third. Yeah, AJ, if you if you found a better way to make this look prettier, go for it. And you can send it to me, and then I'll post it up on my Facebook page. Um, and everybody keeps thanking me for that. I need I need to say, yeah, you color coded it. Yeah, see, mine's is I just go black and white on it. But uh, I always try to make sure that you get get props on that. Okay, Anthony, I appreciate it. Um, so here here here's the one where I took the um, third and knocked it up an octave. And you can see we had two shapes. The, the spread one, same just like here, where there were only two shapes here. And then here we had this one and this one and this one are the same. So the one, the four and the five are all major. So they had the same shape. And then the two, three chord, the six chord and the seventh chord all used a minor third. So they all have the same shape. And that was this, harmonized, this was this. Which I really love the sound of that. And then we did the fifths and here's the fifths. Okay, and that's the that's the the tritone there. That's the B note. But here's the the starting of the C. Okay, but then we what we did was we combined we combined our information that we had yesterday. Yesterday we combined the, the that that root third the root and the tenth interval, and we added the fifth, and we came up with this chord, which I love these chords. I could put a little delay on there and make it really pretty. Go with the neck pickup. So those are so those were this. I get get ready to screenshot again. This is what we did. So we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna talk you through this again. So you're gonna get. You're gonna you're gonna get the 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 type of learning that's based on repetition, okay? AJ has a question. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that right now. Um, okay. So before I do this, re reteach this, because um, then we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna redo this, but then we're on a new piece of paper, okay? And I have to print it. Dang it! I need one. I don't have one. Let me print one. I'm an idiot. Um, and then. Um, well, uh, I'm going to print this. Let's see. Guitar paper printer. Okay, this one here. I'm going to print up two or three right now. And then I will look at questions. Sorry. Thank you, Kathy, for uh, print. Oh, copy. There we go. Um, and Kathy, thank you for <laughs> the, the exclamation marks. Okay, so I'm going to, I got to go. Um, let's see. Uh, taking this. Oh. Oh, did I touch my... Oh, we have a drinking game, too. I forgot to... What? Sip. What did I do? Did I touch my face? Okay. So we have a drinking game. <laughs> it's now has, it now has four rules. I hope we don't add any more rules because I can't even remember them all. Uh, oh, I hit my ear <laughs> when I brushed my hair. Oh, you guys are brutal. Okay. So, uh, so I... Uh, uh, so if... if if I touch my face, which we're not supposed to do in the coronavirus era, uh, I, we all have to take a sip. If I refer to myself in the third person, we have to take a sip. 
Um, let's see. Uh, shoot. If I, if I, <laughs> the new one was, let's see, what's the third one? What's the, what's the third one? Oh, if I say I had abandoned high school called, <laughs> you have to take a sip. And then the fourth one is, uh, if I pick up a guitar and I don't realize what tuning I'm in, <laughs> which happened once and will probably never happen again. Okay, so Pepper, you're saying, and there's probably more than one question here, but um, oh, pad, pants confirmed. I am wearing pants. That's the other game we play. Is Tom wearing pants? Uh, it's not. It's not cold enough. Oh shoot, it's not cold enough to uh, to wear shorts or swim trunks yet. Um, Tetris cords wearing shorts here in Holland. Oh, awesome, Dennis. Uh, let's see. Better not do a quiz. I'm an older college student and I've done. Yeah, Pepper, you got crazy. You've done two quizzes. That's crazy. Um, let's see. Charles. Oh, yeah. There's a difference between saying modes versus scale. Not really. No. Modes scale. Uh, modes. Modes imply, you know, when you say modes, oftentimes you imply that you're not doing major or minor. You know, you're not talking about major or minor. You're talking maybe about Dorian or Mixolydian or Lydian. Uh, but the Greek term for major scale is um, Ionian, and the Greek term for a minor scale is Aeolian. So if you want to get all modal about it, um, you could call them that. But yeah, no, I would I would say you're, if I'm talking about a scale, technically a major scale is a mode. I might not use the term mode if I'm not specifically talking about other modes. I might just say, hey, play a major scale and then move on from there. So if that, hopefully that answers your question, Charles. Um, Denise, is there someone named Denise here? Did I miss that? So Walter, how's it going so far? <laughs> I don't know if you're learning anything, but uh, one thing I try to do is I try to look at the camera and not the screen, but see, here's me looking at the camera. And so thus I'm looking at you guys and here's me looking at the screen. I, I think it looks pretty close to the same. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Kat, uh, Pepper, April 29th, that'll be awesome. You'll be, are you completely done with school at that point? Don't worry about rewatch. Yeah, yeah. You, Pepper, you may not. Well, you might want to rewatch yesterday's because, I, like I said, I took it. I started very, very basic. Yeah, Blackbird is very similar to that. You're right. Blackbird's is Blackbird is um, uh, tense. It's tense. Blackbird is definitely tense. That's a great, great thing. Okay, Pepper. I'm, I mean, Kathy. I'm, I think I'm still wa working my way to the question because you said AJ has a question. Oh. The question is, do you, do you have an extra dot on the fourth fret on this guitar? I do not. Um, let's see. Okay. So, David, let's see. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> you, had to talk, you had to mute me. Yeah. Always mute me if you got to talk to your wife. That is a rule. <laughs> Uh, then, okay, so, oh, everybody's telling me what they're drinking, too. Um, so I've got coffee and water today, which is pretty much the same every day. Um, so question, do you have an extra dot on the fourth fret? Oh, do I have an extra? No, this guitar, some guitars, well, it depends. Every guitar is different. Not every guitar, but um, I like it when it's on the ninth. I've had a guitar, somewhere i got a guitar that has it on the 10th, and it always throws me off. Uh, some guitars do have double dots at the... If that's what you're referring to. Oh, oh, maybe on the diagram. No. This one, the, yeah, these have a double dot on the 12th and that's it. So that helps you find the 12th fret. But this one actually did it right. I think five or three, five, seven, and nine. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if that answers your question, AJ, but Anthony, but um, hopefully. All right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we have a drinking game. Yeah, I think Verdi, where's Verdi? Is Verdi here? He's, oh, there you are, Verdi. Yeah, Verdi's the only one doing beer and smoking cigarettes. We're all trying to get Verdi to, 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 cause so Verdi, we were talking, I don't know if you were here. I think you fell asleep, he said. Um, but uh, we were talking about, and I got more diagrams printed up. Boom. Um, we were talking uh, about trying to get you to, cause you chain smoke. We're trying to get you, you said you, you can't go 10 minutes without a cigarette. So, we were trying, I said, well, okay, we'll go 10 minutes and tomorrow we'll go 15, but that was too much. We're just going to try to get you to go to 12 minutes between cigarettes. So as soon as you finish your cigarette, put the timer for 12 minutes. Let's see if we can get you to 12. Tomorrow we're going for 13. So that's our game. <laughs> that's another game we're playing here. Uh, and we're all going to hold, we're all going to hold Verdi accountable here. Uh, okay. Multi-sips over, 
code. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Walter. Uh, let's see. Dennis shall be Denise from now on. Okay. Yeah. And, and Walter, I totally understand that you're lost. That, that, that makes sense. Although you're one of the most musical drummers I've ever worked with. So you understand music on a deeper level than just the theory aspect of it. Um, let's see. Michael Jackson. Learning theory is easier than learning to play. It. Exactly. And Michael, I know. I, I, I think you're the Michael Jackson we know. We're Facebook friends. Um, and exactly. And that's why I'm trying to make this easier. So I think yesterday's lesson was a really good application of that. Um, it's really, really difficult to, to apply theory to guitar. And it's not, this is yesterday's lesson. I'd never taught that before. That was a brand new, and I, I think I would teach it a hundred times that way because I really think, I think I felt like there were a lot of light bulbs going on. What we did was we took one scale up a string. We added a third to that, went up a string. Then we added a third up an octave and did the same thing. And then we added a fifth. And then we combined that. We did a fifth and a tenth. I mean, a, a, yeah, fifth and a tenth. We had the one. So we actually, ultimately, yesterday, we ended up with three different shapes. We had a major shape that covered our one chord, our four chord, and our five chord. So C, F, G. Then we had a minor shape that covered the D minor, this E minor, the A minor. And then we had the diminished shape, okay? So now we're gonna do this again though. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna write this out again together. So if you can um, print out this, okay? And we are going to do this over again. And, and then we're going, because because and then we're gonna add the sevens in here, okay? So you're gonna have a sheet with just the majors and the minor and the diminished triads written this way. And the, um, uh, and then here, this one is going to be look very similar, but we will have a note on the third string and that'll be our seventh. That's where we're going to put our seventh. Um, so take your blank sheet and get your pen ready. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Um, basically, the way it's going to be is we're going to root fifth and third, and that's going to be true for all those. So I don't really need to write that again. So take the first Take this sheet, and if you just if you don't have a print, you can just draw draw these on your paper. Um, and you're not going to need any more than three frets. So if you're going to draw this on a piece of paper, we none of these chords are, are are take up more than three frets. So you're good. Okay. All right, we got 38 right now. All right, so I'm going to take my number two pen. No, that's a number three. I'm going to take my number two, and I'm going to put a a three and a dot, and there's our C note. Okay. That's the third fret of the fourth, uh, fifth string, and that's a C. And this is going to be a C major chord. This is the one chord. I'm going to write the fifth above it. See that? That's a fifth above it. That's our little power chord, little two-note power chord that we can do. And then the third above that is here. Okay, and there's our tenth. All right? And I'll write the fingerings. That's, that we can do. One, I use my first finger, third finger, and fourth finger. I don't need to, I'm not gonna cross out, I'm not gonna cross out these strings that we're not using. That just gets too messy. You can if you want to, if you wanna do a squiggly line or put X's down here, you're totally welcome to. Um, but these are just three note chords. And again, the probably the most difficult thing about these chords is the right hand technique that you're gonna need to be able to make them sing, okay? And that's, you're gonna be, you're gonna wanna grab, you know, the thumb's gonna get the C note in this case. The first finger's gonna get that G and the and the pinky. Oh, thanks, I see, I just got your email, AJ, thanks. Um, and then the third finger's gonna grab the second string. Now, um, you could strum this if you're really good at muting, if you really wanted to. Um, and I might do that. Um, I'm good at muting, but muting is one of, muting strings, open strings is one of those techniques that's really, um, it's a difficult thing to do because you're actually asking your hand to do more than just make notes. You're asking it to make notes and stop notes. And I'll tell you who's freaking amazing at that is Eddie Van Halen. Oh my gosh. The stuff he could do. <laughs> I just, I watch his hands and I go, golly, he's cause he's playing through cranked amps. And part of the, the reason you have to mute if you're playing in a band live um, is this, those strings will ring out. Even if you don't touch them, they'll just start vibrating because the volume is so loud. So Eddie is like a beast at that kind of stuff. So, okay. Um, 
Let me see. Make sure I'm, everybody's. Hey, Mayunk. Mayunk. I think that's how you said to pronounce it. I'm still never going to get it right. Is Ab here? I haven't seen Ab yet. Oh, Walter, you'll get better at this. Trust me. Go watch my first videos. <laughs> And I also, Walter, you've taught in classes before. I, I've taught clinics. I think that really, when I first taught my first clinics, the first two I did, one was in Detroit and one was um, in Phoenix. I was so nervous and I was so thankful, even though Maranatha was not too happy that there were only 20 guitar players in my class. I was so happy it was poorly attended. Um, but uh, I was so nervous that I literally was leaning up against the wall so you couldn't, my knees would stop shaking. Uh, but... <laughs> After doing this for a long time and then just doing YouTube lessons, I've just gotten comfortable in front of the camera in front of people. So, And also, I think, Walter, leading worship at Shepherd really helped kind of get rid of the nerves of being in front of the public and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, you just I'm just reacting to a lot of what people are saying. So that's kind of the fun for me. Um, oh, really? <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, Walter, I don't know. And the thing I told you, Walter, is to try to be consistent. Like, this has been amazing. I've started at the same time every day so that so that all, everybody can kind of just plan on it. Um, okay, so the next chord we're gonna do is D minor. And it's gonna be at the fifth fret. And it's gonna also have a fifth like this. And it's gonna be one, third finger and second finger. So there's that. And Walter, it may be, <laughs> I'm not gonna go two hours a day. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah yeah. It doesn't make for good TV if I'm just like. Oh, hold up, <laughs> that's that doesn't make for good TV. But but the other day I was texting Beth, <laughs> and I, I was like, that that doesn't make for good TV either. But I'm like, where is she? <laughs> I didn't know where she went. It's like you're supposed to be in the house. Okay, okay. So there's there's our one chord and our two chord. C major, D minor. Okay, the next chord, the next chord in the key of C would be E minor. So it's going to be the exact same shape as D minor, but just moved up two frets. All right. And that's at the seventh fret. And it's the same fingerings. One, three, two. Like so. All right. Don't screenshot yet. All right. Then uh, we go up to the eighth fret. We get our four chord. And our four chord and our five chord are both major, so we're going to go back to the shape we used for the C chord. And Walter, the harder part than reading and talking is writing and talking and not making a mistake while I'm writing. <laughs> this is this is the hard part. Okay, there's our F major, and then our, our G major is going to be the, just the same, but it's going to be the 10th fret. I'll get my... <laughs> I'll get, we'll have to do... You know, you could even... We could have a conversation... And you could tell me exactly how we could talk on the phone. You could tell me exactly how to pronounce your name. And two days later, I'll say it wrong. OK, the only way I'm going to remember your name is if you write me a check. <laughs> That's what I tell people. It's like, if you hire me, I'll never forget you. Uh, I know. Confessions of a musician. OK, now that 10th fret, same shape. Just move it up two frets. One, three, four fingering wise. OK, and keep in mind. The bottom note is the root, the, set, the next note is the fifth, and we put the third on top, so it's technically a tenth. Did, did he say squirrel? Did I, there's no squirrel. <laughs> uh, is there, oh, oh, try a piece of, oh, oh, somebody's helping somebody. Yes, um, the, uh, on my, on several instruments, you'll see my Martin right there has foam under the headstock. Um, that's probably because at some point I was recording something. And if, in fact, in this guitar, I have a problem with the springs being ringing and being picked up by the pickups. This is the only Strat that I have that does that. I don't know why. It's the only g &L I have. So maybe it's something they're manufacturing. So I actually stuffed cotton. Like there's a ton of cotton in there and it keeps it. But I would hit like a, if I hit a short note, say specifically, like that's why on the acoustics I do it. My mandolin has it. But if I were to hit something like a real a stab, like this, um, you know, I want to hear those delays, but I don't want to hear sympathetic vibrations ringing out in my guitar, um, because like you said, an amp, a loud amp is going to pick that stuff up. 
And um, so like my mandolin, I have foam on both sides of it because a lot of times on mandolin, you're doing like choppy things. And I was, the, the overtones were driving me crazy. However, the interesting thing about that is people actually expect to hear the overtone. So in some ways it sounds more like a mandolin sample when I mute the, uh, the strings behind the, you know, in front of the, the bridge and behind the nut. Um, and, and that, you know, that's kind of weird because people do expect kind of without knowing that they're expecting it, kind of expect to hear those uh, harmonics, those sympathetic, vi sympathetic vibrations or harmonics. Okay. Now we're doing the A minor chord, which is the next one. We're almost to the point where you can do a screen cap if you want. But again, I would re I would write this out yourself for that extra level of lear learning. There's A minor. Okay. 12th fret. Technically, if you can't get to the 12th fret, if you're playing a 12th fret guitar, um, I, um, uh, you could play this in open position. So it would be open. So a minor seven or a, I'm sorry, a minor played that way. Of course, I'm going to put X's in here, but you, you could play it like this also X, um, open two X one X like that. That would also be a minor. If you can't reach, I'm not going to write it here, but if you can't reach it up on your acoustic guitar for some reason, um, cause a classical guitar, that might be a little tough on a classical guitar if you're playing nylon. Okay, the next one is going to be at the 14th fret. I'm going to also write it at the second fret. And this is our B diminished. 14, like this. And this is this is one that's... Um, I would still use... Let me check. I, I want to make sure I... I think I still use my ring and... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think I'd still use first finger third finger, fourth finger for this, just like I'm making a major tri uh, triad, but drop, drop it down here. And the thing is, like I said about my lesson yesterday, um, so I'm going to write B diminished out in two places. Um, I, I, you know, that, that lesson, I, I think, you know, I wouldn't normally, like if you're teaching some, a beginner chords, these are not chords I would naturally teach. But I really feel like one of the things that's really cool about these chords um, is that you're learning at the same time you're learning a new chord shape. You're actually starting to learn your fretboard, which, you know, I, I told you yesterday uh, when we started this, you know, the, the first thing you, you know, one of the most important things you can do, on, especially as an electric guitar player, is to memorize your fretboard. And the beauty of that um, is you only have to do it once. Once you know it, you know it. Well, the thing I talk about acoustic guitar players, and Walter has coined this phrase that I think is, is so great, uh, strumming is drumming. The thing that acoustic guitar players really lack is a lot of different grooves. A lot of times they'll pick up the guitar and they'll play every song with the same... So I really try to try to encourage acoustic guitar players to learn as many grooves as you can. And the best way to do that is to imitate drummers. So you listen to a drum. You can even just pull up like GarageBand if you have Apple Music, drop in a drum loop, and then try to copy that drum loop with your right hand. Just stay on one chord. Don't even change. That's a whole nother level. We, we could do, I could do lessons on that. We could, we could talk about that if you want. I, you can watch me struggle, try to make, make it like some <laughs> trap hip hop <laughs> snares going at, you know, triplet 30 second notes, you know, try to emulate that on the guitar. Although, although Walter can do that really good on a hi-hat, but I, I've like, I can actually kind of do it sometimes on the guitar too. That might be really fun. That would be one of those things where it'd be like, okay, let's see Tom struggle. Uh, Cause you never get to see that. <laughs> all you, all of you all think I'm a superhero, don't you? Okay. And I'm going to write the C chord again out uh, up at the 15th fret. So if you're playing electric, you can totally do it up here. And we're getting ready to get to the point where you can do a screenshot. Okay, these two are the same. All right. So this is... Uh, okay, I was just I had a, almost had a heart-stopping moment there. I thought, did I just ruin this? No, I did not ruin this. Okay. So, here you go. You can do a screenshot. This is the major, major, minor, and, and diminished triads in the key of C major using this form. <laughs> Humble Pie. Mm, superhero name, Squirrel Man. Yeah, that would totally be my superhero name. Or I had a, high, had a band in high school called Man. <laughs> that would be my superhero name.
Okay. Tom, are you going to do gu guitar mod lessons soon at some point? What, what uh, you mean like how to mod a guitar? Ooh. The problem I had, uh, you can record, but you can't play on stage. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, Um, yeah, that's right, David. You were a drummer. Um, Dennis, I'm not sure. What do you mean by guitar mods? Do you mean like mo modifying guitars? Because I I don't do that. In fact, my guitar is at the shop right now. Um, yeah, my dad was a drummer, actually. He put himself through college playing jazz. Um, and then and then later he was in, he had all the percussion toys. Um, okay. So now uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to pull out because we're going to do that. We're going to add the seventh to this. Okay. Oh, I guess technically that's a sip. <laughs> yeah. Like, eh, that's a, that's a, that's a half a sip, I think. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dennis, did you, oh, Yeah. Okay. Dennis, I mean, I, I, the, one of the things I never do that, I never mod my guitars at all. Um, I'll take a break right here. Okay. Until a little bit, but we're going to, we're going to come right back to this. I really don't. Um, I, I'm not very good at it. I hate soldering. Um, I'm really bad at soldering. So like swapping out pickups is not something I would do. Alex, my son does that. Um, but the other thing is I, I've, at least I've, I've been fortunate enough to, if I don't like the sound, you know, for one thing, I won't buy a guitar unless I really like it. And if I like it and then I later don't like the sound of it, I mean, these aren't the best humbuck, you know, uh, stack humbuckers in the world. Uh, they're kind of like hot rails, but these are, these are e GNLs pickups. Um, I could probably swap out these for better humbuckers. Um, but this came with these pickups. So th you can see the, you see the two rails here. Uh, basically, it's a squished humbucker. So this is a very, not a, a very, very clean sounding guitar. It doesn't buzz at all or hum. Um, so these are mini humbuckers essentially, and that and they got humbuckers got their name because they kill hum. They don't hum like Strats would. Um, but I generally don't. And if I feel I feel like if I don't like the sound of the guitar all of a sudden, to just put it away, and then later I'll probably appreciate it again. But for some reason, I'm like into something else. Um, so let's see. I um, in Larson Congress, I'm available. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, my young. Yeah, I mean, my my advice generally on on singing and playing at the same time um, is um, uh, just just to get down the guitar part to pick, pick a very simple song, get the guitar part down so that you don't have to think about it, get the singing down. So you don't have to think about it and like know the words and the lyric melody and everything, and then bring those two together and just power through and you'll get it. Um, yeah. Cause I, I started out singing my, when I started singing and playing, it was, I was singing harmonies to my wife. She was the lead singer and I would sing, I wanted to hear harmony. So i like got to the point where I could play guitar and sing harmonies. Um, I also have a trick about uh, sing a string, which you can check out on my videos. Uh, we could talk about that another time. Um, I do still have the PRS. Yeah. I don't generally get rid of guitars. It's very rare. Um, I can play that. Maybe, maybe uh, D David, I'll try to remember to pull that out. And we'll use that one tomorrow. Uh, that one has soap bars and it's a McCarty model. It's a beautiful guitar, but it's one of those ones that I bought that I kind of wish I hadn't because I just never use it, but I really wanted a guitar with soap bars and I was thinking about getting soap bars are like the, the they, they call them soap bars because they look like soap bars. I, I don't know if you can see that Epiphone there that my daughter drew on behind the camera, but it's just, they look like big plastic soap bars. Um, and uh, they're single coil, so they're kind of noisy. So the G, that that uh, Paul Reed Smith, the PRS, um, it's, a, it's a little too noisy for session work. Like if I put it in the middle, then it's quiet because they're out of phase with each other. But if I use one pickup or the other, it's just too, too hummy. Um, so... My, my my Martin, I don't know what year it is, but my that Martin right there is a 70s and it's a D35. It's a D35. Um, and then you, yeah. Um, and it's a five string Squire bass that uh, a composer bought for me that I work for a lot. And he he kept writing stuff that was too low for the bass. And he said, well, can I get you a five string? I said, sure. <laughs> so he bought me a five string. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to this sheet. Okay, if you have this sheet, we have one more diagram here, or or you can just draw the line, or you can just follow along. You don't need you don't need to necessarily. Again, I'm free I'm free flying on this. Um, on this lesson, I'm kind of trying to figure out the best way. To, I should have thought about this before I got on air, <laughs> but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a C scale again here. I'm going to copy this here, okay? This this one here I'm going to put down here. Exactly the same. So I'm going to start on C, and then we use our formula, okay? Or you, if you want to think two tetrachords with a whole step between them, you could you could do that. So our formula is, what is it? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half for a major scale. And... Uh, uh, yeah, right. P Pee Wee is the bass player at my church, and he's constantly modding vintage basses. Okay, so here's C. We're going to go up a whole step to D, which is two frets. Go up another whole step to E, half step to F, uh, F one fret, two frets up to G, two frets up to A, two frets up to B, and then the half step to finish it out. And then we end up with another scale. Okay, now. We have to go to the seventh. Where is the seventh? Well, we're, we have a string that's available still. The third string is still available. So look, if we count up in this, there's C. There's our major scale. Here's C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is B. B is the seventh of C in the key of C. Okay. Now, the thing I love about like major sevenths, and that's that interval. That's a major seventh. We're going to have two intervals. We're going to have a major seventh, which is played, you can see like that. Okay, we got, a, a, they're just two strings up, or one string, and there's a string in between us. There's a fourth string right here, and then it's on the adjacent fret. Okay, that's one, and then the, the, the minor seventh is this. They're on the same fret. Still a string between them. So here's a major seventh, and here's a minor seventh. So you can hear it minor. So you hear major. Um, I'm going to change the sound real quick. Go back to this sound. We got a major seventh here and a minor seventh there. You can hear the difference. But we're, but in C, it's a major seventh here from C to B. And then D is minor. G is a minor seventh. Now, the crazy thing, like that sounds dissonant. I didn't touch my face. That sounds dissonant. But if we add the fifth and the third to it, it sounds beautiful. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that cool? If I just play it by, by itself, it's like, I like, I think it's a beautiful sound. I love a major seventh. But I also love a major seventh because I know what's coming. Okay? Uh, 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 the inversion, we're not, okay, no quiz on this at the end of the week. And don't take a drink. That's not one of the things that you can take a drink for. <laughs> Verdi, you hear me? <laughs> Pretty. How long did you go between cigarettes this time? Oh, man, it snowed really dang, Chris. I didn't know you were in Ontario. Okay, so the inversion of a major seventh is a minor second. Minor second, if you remember, is our half step. Okay, that's also very dissonant, right? But if I add the rest of the C major scale to that... That dissonance goes away a little bit. It's still it's still pretty dissonant, but it's a beautiful sound. It's like if I play this is one of my favorite chords. I'm going to write this in. This is a cool chord, a fun chord to play. Anybody can play it. But if I play F sharp and G, it's kind of a dissonant sound, right? But if I play with an E minor in a context of an E minor second, it's like oh, it's beautiful. And that's just played this way. It's called an E minor second, not an E minor ninth, because there's no seventh in there. If you want to make it an E minor ninth, we're going to get to this. This is the this is where we take the the next step, go from sevenths to to ninths. But uh, to be a, to call that second a ninth, we have to have a seventh. Don't worry, no quiz on this. Explain it later. But basically, an E minor ninth, we have we need to have a seventh. Okay. And so that one way you could play that would be zero, two, four, zero, three, zero. A little bit more of a handful, but a beautiful chord. If you got your guitar out, play this. 
Wow, you got some warm temperatures there, Jim. That's awesome. We're gonna get we get one more day of rain and then we're we're getting sunny for the next ten days, I think. Isn't that a great chord though? Slide that first finger up to C and you get So that's just a fun chord. You can make a note of that and have fun with that later. Okay. So that B is our seventh. So what we need to do is we need to go up the neck. Okay, you're gonna do this with me. We're gonna play the B, okay? And uh, we're gonna go up the C scale starting on B. Uh, for bonus points, what's the name of the C, uh, what's the name of the mode using in the key of C that starts on B? Anybody, anybody, anybody? It's Judith Hilo's dad, yeah, it's Judith Hill's dad. <laughs> it, self-correct, autocorrect. How do you correct from, oh yeah, you got, uh, is that Michelle or Bruce? I can never tell. It says Bruce, but I thought you said you were Michelle. Very good, Jim. It's the Locrian scale. So technically, we're going to be playing the Locrian scale here on the G string, okay? Oh, sorry. You guys want to take a drink? Tom is going to play the Locrian scale starting on the G string. So here we are at B. Um, you can use, let's just use our second finger, because when we put it together with the, the C scale, we're going to use these two fingers for the whole thing. So B at the, th at the fourth fret, C, whole step to D. So we're at the seventh fret. Go to the ninth fret to E, half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A, and then whole step to B. So B, so fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, Ninth fret, tenth fret, twelfth fret, fourteenth fret, and sixteenth fret. And if you're on acoustic, you might have to go like this, or you could drop down to here. Oh, we're back to here. Okay, we're back full axis. You, you might go down to here and then up here if you want to finish that way. Okay, now let's add the root to this. Okay, so here we go. So we have, we're gonna just be on the fifth string and the third string. Um, so you can use your fingers, your thumb and finger, grab it like that. And it's fairly easy because we're going to grab the same strings every time. You got this? Oh, okay. That's what. Oh, okay. So you've always been Bruce. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we're at the third fret of the fifth string, and we're going to be on the fourth fret of the third string. Or yeah, third string. Okay. And that's the that's a C seventh. The right? red. That's a not seven C seventh. Sorry. That's a. Uh, a major seventh, starting on C. Okay, then we're gonna go up fifth fret and fifth fret. Okay, that's our next seventh interval. Slide that up two frets, and here's the E minor, seventh there. Then we have, we go up one fret, and we're gonna be, first finger is gonna be on the eighth fret, and the second finger is gonna be on the ninth fret. So we have a major seventh again. Then we're gonna to go to the we're gonna go up to G and we're not gonna have a major seventh because that's an F sharp. We need an F natural. There's no F sharp in the key of C. So this is gonna be the outlier. This is gonna be the weird major chord. C and F are gonna be the same, but G is gonna be different. Okay, so we should be at 10 and 10. <laughs> All right, and then go up two more frets for the A to G on top. So we're 12th fret and then 14th fret. And 14th fret, or if you're having trouble getting that, you could always go down to here, two and two. Okay, so here it is again, and I'm going to write it out. We're, we're going to write it out together. It's actually really cool sounding, isn't it? I mean, I love using sevenths when I solo sometimes. Um, you know, because the natural tendency when you're soloing is to, is to use. scale tones um, or pentatonic, you know, so. but I like to, you know, like if I'm in C, uh, maybe. I just like the sound of the kind of, kind of. Like the sound of sevenths um, and it, it kind of will open up your soloing idea so that's just something for your pros out there if you've got 
it, you know, if you're like really bored right now, cause you're like, I know all this Tom, gosh, if you're a 13 year old pro, <laughs> gosh, Tom, I know this. Um, then uh, <laughs> you can totally, totally use that little tidbit and, and add that to your soloing skills. All right. You guys are having your own conversation over here. Um, but uh, yeah, Dorian would be, uh, Kathy would be built on the note above C, but the note before C in the, in the C scale would be the low green scale. Okay. So, oh, what did I do here? Oh, it's upside down. Wait a minute. What am I doing? Okay. <laughs> it's upside down. I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? Okay. So we're down here. Here's our C major scale here. We're going to, here's the B. If you want to write the B right there, there's B. And so if we wrote a, we don't have to think Locrian. Please don't think you have to think Locrian. That's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but basically just do the alphabet from B and B to C is a half step. So go up one fret and those two should be on the same fret. And we'll do that looping thing. And the looping thing actually will look better on this than any of the others. Um, and then D, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, that was the D. So then we're going to go, that was B, C, and then D is two frets up. And then E is two frets up. And then F is one fret up. G is one fret up. A is one fret up. And then I don't really have room for B, but there it is. I added it. Okay, I'm going to get my skinny pen out. My number one pen, and I'm gonna I'm gonna loop these, so you can see that they belong together. And AJ, again, thank you for doing that. I'll check your work, and then if it's right, I'll post it, and everybody can have it. However, like I said, I think you learn a lot from actually writing it down. So you're, because you're learning from me saying stuff, you're learning from looking at stuff visually. So you, some of you are auditory learners, some of you are visual learners, and some of you are more hands-on learners. I mean, Walter has four kids and they homeschool all four kids. So he knows every kid learns differently. Uh, Alex was a very hands-on kid. He can do, he can figure anything out if he can tear it apart and put it back together again. Uh, but Jack was like, I got to see it. I got to figure it out on paper. You know, he's got to write it out. He's got to understand it. Um, so that's, and I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't know what I am. I sh I, I'm kind of a, I definitely am not an auditory learner, auditory, auditory learner, um, auditory, auditory auditory learner. I'm definitely not that because I've had homage, speaker homage explained to me a hundred times and I've forgotten it every time. <laughs> I still don't understand speaker homage. Consequently, I still blow guitar amps. Okay. So here's, here's our seventh. So there's a major seventh. There's a minor seventh, minor seventh, major seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh, minor seventh. So you can see actually occurring in a major scale, we have only two naturally occurring major sevenths. And then we have minor, a uh, bunch of minor sevenths. Okay. And you'll notice I had to add a fret here just to be able to get to that last one. That's for you electric players. Acoustic, don't worry about it. I, you know, I have a hard time reading too, but you know why, Dennis? Um, I'm a very slow reader, but I went to, at the time was, they were like, we're progressive school. I, I lived in, uh, in, outside of Washington, DC in Potomac, Maryland for about three and a half years when I was a kid. And they were doing what was called um, shoot, sight reading. And so what sight reading was, was uh, they said, oh, pho phonics is old school. Phonics is not the way to do it. You need to just look at words and memorize them. And so they put a word up and you learn it. And then they, you know, flashcard, and they put up another word and put up another word. And that's how you learn to read. So when I read, I figured this out because I, I read music, I read music. I read through phrases. I read lines. I read music almost like phonetically. See, somebody who learns phonics, they tend to read through a sentence. They read through a sentence and, and consequently read through paragraphs. Instead, when I read, it's like bop, 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 bop. And so it's exhausting. And your your eyes, your brain, you're one word at a time kind of thing. It's the worst way to learn. And of course, now, of course, now they go back to phonics. When I taught my kids to read, I taught all three of our kids to read um, in homeschool. Um, we had this great book, Teach Your Kids to Read in 100 Lessons. It was really good. And it was starting the basic phonics stuff. And by the end, the 100 lessons, 100 days, they were like reading. It was crazy. And I, through that's when I realized, oh, this is not how I learned to read. Um, and uh, the cool thing about that book was that it had um, text um, that you're supposed to say to the kid, you know, like, 
like they would say something you say you know it would write out very good johnny you know or whatever you know insert kid's name here um and that, that seems like weird but it actually was really helpful because it allowed you just to kind of read through the page and kind of get through that page and and they would help you point out okay now say it again this way and now look notice it's in this word and that kind of thing and it was really really good so i learned that reading for me is very tough i always if i want to go to bed and fall asleep i just pull out a book and start reading i get i fall asleep like within 10 minutes it's horrible so um yeah see dennis that's exactly right so i bet you you were you were taught sight reading you weren't taught phonics and of course you're in holland so you're probably taught uh, is it dutch um uh, for play yeah oh yeah well that's the other thing pepper it's it's like for pleasure yeah definitely you read pepper says for for pe pleasure she reads fast but for for school it's slow and that's true because it's school you, a it's much boring it's drier um it's facts it's numbers whatever and you need to know this so you're trying to you're trying to drive it into your head um but with um uh, with, oh, no, I need this. With um, with pleasure, you can just kind of cruise through it. I actually, you're right. Um, in fact, the book I'm reading now, right now is um, a Django, uh, a Django Reinhardt biography. And it's, I'm, I, I'm having a hard time because there's a lot of cities, a lot of names, a lot of, you know, French words, French names, uh, uh, different things like that. So it's, a, it's like reading a textbook. It's not, in my opinion, it, it was kind of heralded as like the ultimate Django Reinhardt biography, uh, but it's pretty dry and academic. So I'm not really digging it. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but like I got into reading Dickens and into really into um, Austin, like Pride and Prejudice. Oh my gosh, I love that book so much. And I couldn't put it down. And I couldn't put it fall asleep. I was reading David Copperfield and I was like, why didn't I get, why didn't I dig this when I was in school? I dig it so much now. So, oh, you're good. Okay. You're going live right off the top. Okay, topic, my most recent. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Actually, I will have questions for you. So I will be on there. And, and maybe Walter, before you go live, call me. I'll call you after I'm done. You're going to watch or whatever. You just keep me in the background or whatever. Um, so we got 40 viewers right now. I think it got up to 45. Uh, but Walter, let me post your, I'm going to put a link to your page right now so people can, and my, G, Michael Giacchino is a, mo what movie was that? What was the last movie that you did with Michael? If you're still there, Walter. I don't know any, uh, Arita, I don't know any, um, software pedals per se. I don't have any pedals that are software based except I do. I mean, I'm sure that these are, uh, I really love these. This is a great pedal. For, for for 50 bucks. This is the most amazing pedal. It's the Behringer Ultra, Ultra Shifter Harmonist. This thing, I have so much fun with this. Uh, and this definitely has software inside of it. You know, it's like, it's, it's, there's nothing analog about this pedal. I don't know, I don't think that's what you're referring to. You're probably referring to pedal boards that you can plug into computers and things like that. So I don't know, but um, Walter, uh, Walter plays on a lot of movies. Um, and so uh, Michael Giacchino, did like Up and like a, a lot of Disney movies, even did uh, one of the Star Wars movies and Walter played on that. So he's going to talk. That's a, that's a great idea, Walter. You can just talk about whatever. It's it's interesting. So, um, but I prim I might have questions for you. So I, I may call you when I'm done here and, and just touch base with you before you go on. Uh, but let me, let me, uh, let me give you the link for that. Okay. Um, and I've had boss pedals. Uh, the, Live, I tend to use my Lexicon rig, which is from the 90s, and it's software on the inside. So I definitely know it's software, but it's a rack mount thing. Um, let's see. YouTube. I think it's. Yeah, Walter, this here. Okay. And if you if you want, you guys can subscribe. If it's not something you're going to. Um, here's Walter's. Wait a minute. Where am I? Here we go. Uh, here's Walter's. Yep. Rick and Bob. Oh, that's the movie you worked on. Okay. Yep. You did. You worked on Ratatouille, right? Yeah. So, um, so check out Walter. You don't have to turn on the bell if it's not something you're really, really interested in, but he, he needs to get up to a thousand subscribers. So anything you guys can do to help. Also, Walter, just so you know, when you go live, um, if 
of your subscribers, um, your channel will jump to the top if you're live. So if I go to, so I subscribe to like 500 channels, okay? If Rick Beato is live, it jumps up to the top and it has a little live icon. If Shepard is live, it jumps up, there's a little live icon. So you'll automatically jump to the top of people's feed. So that will help. No, it's a, <laughs> you're fine, Walter. I'm just trying to get Walter up to a thousand subscribers so he can start monetizing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so here, now we're going to do this. We're going to take, we're going to combine this here. Okay. Where's my finger? There's my finger. We're going to combine that. We just did with this, which we just did. Okay. So we're going to take these triads that we learned that I love, and we're going to add the seventh in there. Okay. All right. So the best way to do this is probably just to do it here on paper. We have, we had, remember we had two major sevenths and everything else was minor sevenths. So the two major sevenths were the C chord and the F chord. Okay. So get this paper out that we did today. This is yesterday's. So keep yesterday's pure so that you have one that's just a triad. And then this, and if, if you want, I'll do a, you can do a screenshot and maybe you can print it up and then you can just, you can just write on the printed version if you, do, if you came in late, okay? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I have very, very few notifications turned on. Uh, but thank you. If you do turn on a net desktop notifications, and I apologize, I, I know, I can tell you for a fact when one day I dropped, when I started my, uh, the business of making music series, I waited until I had 10 videos and then I dropped all 10 at once and I lost a bunch of subscribers. And all I could figure out was that, shoot, they got like 10 notifications and they went, oh, forget this. So I really try to limit videos to one or two a week. But if you're uh, if you're subscribed to me and you got notifications turned on, you're getting a notification every day I go live. Uh, right now during this, the, the uh, um, during our quarantine. Um, and so, but everybody is in quarantine. So I don't think any, I, I've been gaining subscribers every day I'm doing this. Yesterday, I got 17 new subs in the two hour period that I was talking. So, okay. So we have two, we have two chords that have a major seventh. So the major seventh, if you remember, was one, skip a string and one fret up. And there's C, there's our root. And here's the B right there. So we're going to put a little, oops, this is number one. I need my number two. Get your number two pen out. I shouldn't even have the three out. I should put that away so I don't get confused. Okay, here's the number two pen. Here's my dot right there, and there's our B note. And here's the other thing that I'm loving about, I think the way you're learning this, you're much more likely, when you see, when you see this is the root and the fifth and the third and the seventh, your, your ability to memorize the fretboard to apply music theory is tenfold. You're, it's exponential. This is opening up so much more than you even realize. Okay. These are some good chords you're going to learn. Uh, Rogue One, that's the one. Yep. Rogue One was the. Uh, I missed something. Oh, nice. Oh, Kim, you started drum lessons. That's awesome. Okay. And then the other one, the F had a major seventh. And those were the only two. So we're going to write here. And then down here for fingering, we'll use our second finger, okay? And put a two there. Okay, so you should have one, three, two, four for fingerings, all right? Now, if we want, we can get really lazy and just go, okay, remember the other, the minor seventh, I touched my face accidentally. Cheers. Walter, you're gonna need to come up with some kind of drinking game for your channel or my subscribers will not follow you. <laughs> As we go, Walter, I'll, I'll go, hey, we should turn that into a drinking game. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bertie, hey, Bertie, how long between cigarettes are we? To be honest. So, um, so this, oh, by the way, then that now, because this is this, um, oh, why do I, yeah, this is right. Um, those both become major seventh chords. Now we're going to add the seventh, okay? Although I screwed up on the B diminished. We're, we're going to have to change that. Sipism! One second. 
<laughs> Verdi, you're lying. I know you're lying. No, Verdi's, Verdi's doing one of these things. Eh? Right? You're doing this, right? <laughs> I, my dad, I grew up and my dad was doing that. He would literally light the next cigarette off of the old one. <laughs> he didn't want to get his lighter out of his pocket. Keeping in mind, my dad died of throat cancer. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, one, one second, what? Oh, yeah. Chris, we're trying to get Verdi to go. Was it now? We're up to, are we up to 12 minutes? We're trying to get you to go to 12 minutes between cigarettes because he's a chain smoker. Okay. So on all of these other chords, the D minor, E minor, G, A minor, and the B diminished. Okay. And we're going to have to change this name a little bit, but you can do that. We'll just kind of cross it out. Um, it the the seventh was on the same fret, just one string up. So the root is on the on the fifth string. The seventh is going to be here on the third string. Okay, so we got thirty one thumbs up. That's pretty good. So see that? See what I did on the D minor there? Okay, so do that on all the rest of them: the E minor, the G, the A minor, the B diminished. And then, oh, I'm sorry, we have another C down here if we want, and we can do we can put it where it belongs, which is one fret up, remember, and make that a C major seven. Okay. And every one of these, all we have to do, except for the big B diminished, but on these four, just add a seventh after here. And sad to say, <laughs> but every one of these, <laughs> you can put a one. This is a bar chord now, okay? Um, so you're gonna have to, to, to play this, you're gonna have to bar. Um, so if you are, um, yeah, oh man. I, yeah, I remember that too. My, you can put a line through here if you want to kind of notate that it's a bar, okay? But that's a D minor seven chord. And that note, the, the note up here is totally legit on the first string too. That's just a redundance of the fifth. If you're playing with fingers, thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger on your right hand, if you're grabbing this with you, and you can keep this a four note chord, but if you're strumming, you, it's okay if you get that top note, because that's still good. And that's gonna be true of every one of these chords. So put a one there, one here. And we're gonna play these, okay? I'm gonna go through these and we're gonna pick up our guitars and play these. But now you can see it, we got all these bar chords here. And C is a bar chord too. We can also, if we want to go all the way to the fifth, we can do that. And the F also. We all the way to the first string like that. Okay. But because these are these chords don't have any. Um, oh, we got to do the diminished. Okay. This is actually so this one we would do one, two, one, three, two, four, like that. And these are no longer diminished chords. These are going to be minor seven flat five. Minor. Seven flat five. That's what that chord is. Okay. So um, yeah. <laughs> Sylvester, man, Walter, you've worked with everyone I want to work with. I'm never, it's just I'm not in that group. I'm just not there. Uh, I get to work with great composers. I I, I don't get me wrong. I, I literally and the great thing is working from home. I've been working every day. I literally have not had a day off since this whole thing started like a month ago. Um, and so for me, it's almost been busier than ever. Um, and then doing this. And again, I make money from doing this, just so you guys know. And, I, you know, occasionally someone will donate. And I, God bless you for doing that. I'm not asking for donations, but I love it when you do that. But uh, it's not it's not at all necessary. I. Um, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this for you guys. I'm doing it for me. This I love doing this, and um, I'm having. It's like I'm really struggling. You know, like I'm almost don't want this quarantine to end because I know if I log in when it's all over, I'm going to see five people up here on the, you know, two thumbs up and a, and five people watching, and it's like, dang it, you know, I really love I love this interaction. I love how you guys all help each other out. That to me is amazing. Uh, I love how everybody is really kind and um, considerate. And I love how everybody puts up with my stories and my squirrel, uh, <laughs> you know. So um, so now we've got, now you can do a screenshot of this, okay? This is the finished seventh chord. These are all seventh chords in the key of C. 
So we have harmonized. Keep in mind, harmony, just like you have singers, you could have four singers sing that. You could have someone sing, you could have someone sing the bottom, the melody. Someone sing the fifth. Someone sing the, the seventh. Someone sing the third. And when you put it all together, it sounds like this. Oh, it's a little gainy. I got to turn down the gain or something. Oh, I know why. Okay, I'm on the wrong sound. Okay. That's what we just learned. Okay, now I'm going to go through chord by chord. We're going to make it. So now pick up your guitars. Right. I know tomorrow in Los Angeles, we have the, it's a thousand dollar fine if you go to a grocery store without a face mask. <laughs> Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? I'm like, oh man, how long is that going to be in place? That's going to be the lamest thing that, and I bought, you saw my face mask. I bought one, but it's like cotton. And so if you're looking to buy a face mask and you don't have one, a um, great place to go is Etsy. Uh, several reasons. One, they're, they're, you can get them right away. They're available now. People have are making them and they're being made right here in the U.S. Um, and they're fastened and um, you're helping out somebody who's probably just running a sewing machine in their living room. So that's, uh, um, in fact, it's a thousand dollar fine if you go to any place, any place of, of like any of the essential businesses without a mask. So like today we went to the, take our, my wife's car in and uh, to the shop and, and we're like putting on our masks just to practice, <laughs> but it's crazy. Yeah. California gets kind of crazy on this kind of stuff. However, I have to hand it to Gavin Newsom for shutting this, shutting down the state early because we have very few cases and we were the first after Washington to shut down everything. So uh, it's been a pain. I feel real bad for people like Walter who, you know, they can't, they can't do those giant scoring sessions. Uh, we can't do church. So um, Alex, my son, lost a ton of gigs. I've been letting Alex sub for me at church because, you know, he needs to work more than I do. And so, um, you know, the, so many gigs have gone away. Okay, so we're going to start. Now, I'm going to play with, you can you can strum if you want. If you're, finger, if you're not great at right hand finger thing, you can use your thumb. You can strum with a pick. You can strum with your fingers, however you want to do this. But I'm going to grab the middle four strings, and that makes it fairly easy. Because I'm not asking you to do some crazy finger picking pattern. All we're doing is grabbing thumb on the fifth string, first finger on the fourth string, third finger on the second, uh, third string, and pinky, or I'm sorry, third finger on the second string. Too many numbers. Sorry. Okay. So the first chord is the C major seven chord. Right there. I wish I had like boom diagram on the screen. That would be dope. Kathy, can you, you can't actually rem access my screen in any way, shape, or form, right? I noticed uh, RJ Ronquillo did one the other day. He, he like had a big thank you pop up on the screen because he hit some button on his keyboard. And I'm like, well, that's cool. <laughs> Wish I had that. But here's the C major seven chord. So third fret. And I don't, we don't need to bar. Well, we're going to need to bar subsequent chords, but not this one. First finger on the third fret. Next string on the fifth, fourth string, we've got third finger, second finger, and pinky. Walter, do you have a guitar in the house? I don't know if you guys even have a guitar. I should probably give you one. Okay, go up two frets. Okay? And so now we're going to make the, e, the D minor shape. We're going to bar at the fifth fret if you can. But we only need to worry about getting the fifth string and the third string. So if your bar isn't perfect and it, like that's dead, the top string is dead, we're not even playing it. So it'd be first finger or the bar, third finger at the seventh fret, the bar at the fifth fret, and then second finger on the sixth fret. So there's D minor seven. C major seven to D minor seven. You could practice that. That could be, you, if you could get that down, because going D minor seven to E minor seven is the same shape. That's not too difficult. Yeah, but Walter, you remembered all the composers' names. 
<laughs> because they've written you a check. See, I'm exactly like Walter. I can't remember anybody. And when you go, when you play at a 10,000 member church, everybody knows your name when you're on stage and it's like, and then you, you've learned their name, but you just forget. But if somebody mm. at church hired me for a session, I remember their name. <laughs> It's so pathetic. It's so sad. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a broken human being. Okay. Okay, there's D minor seven and E minor seven is the same. Okay, so this is seventh fret, ninth fret, seventh fret, and fifth fret. And again, if you hit the top string, if you're strumming, that's totally fine. And I use this chord all the time. Uh the song I did uh not for nothing for Nico and Vince. They're a, a duo from Norway. Uh was it? Uh, let's see, was it? I start with a D minor seven chord. I mean, I mean, I play around with it, but it's basically that's the foundation of that song. So we have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, and then F major seven is exactly the same as C major seven. Okay, so we're going to be up here. <clears throat> So Tom is playing an F major seven chord. And so we're eighth fret, 10th fret, ninth fret, eighth fret. And this one, we don't need to bar. <laughs> Jimmy, you caught me. Hey, Pepe. Oh, I know. No, you have to go to the hospital for therapy. Shoot. Man, be very careful. But I understand the numbers are down and hospital emissions are down. So you hopefully we'll be safe. So everybody send up good thoughts and prayers for Beppe in Italy. Okay, so we have, in fact, this is the first four chords of, I think this is the key it's in, um, uh, Here, There, and Everywhere by the Beatles. Okay. And that's one chord, the two chord, the three chord, and a four chord. And we've harmonized a C major scale with, isn't that cool? I don't know. I think it's cool. Okay. And then we're going to go, so Beppe, we're going to check up on you tomorrow, okay? So log in tomorrow for sure and say, hey. Now we're going to go up two more frets to the 10th fret. And we're going to go 10, 12, 10, 12. So now we're depending on the bar again, okay? You'll notice my second finger isn't being used. Don't flip off your audience. So... <laughs> It worked really hard not to flip off your audience. Okay. And so that's 10, 12, 10, 12. And that's this chord here. And so we've worked our way up to here. Okay. And that's a seventh chord. So the so the four chord in the key of C is F major seven. The five chord in C is G dominant seventh, but we can just say G7. If you say G dominant sevens, people are going to think they flash back to the 60s. No, we don't need to say dominant. Just say G7. That's shorthand. Okay. If you're on, a, if you can reach the 12th fret, then play this. So it's the same shape we did for D minor seven and E minor seven, but we're at the 12th fret. 12, 14, 12, 13, and that's our A minor seven shape. Okay. And um, so th then we got the last, and if you're doing this, if you can't reach that, you can play it zero to zero. Oh, wait, let me, I got to put an X in there first. X, zero, two, zero, one, zero. Um, yeah, or you could do um, X, zero, two, zero, one, X, if, you, if we're playing with four fingers. So you could play it like this, okay? So if you were... That would be the next chord down an octave from that. Okay, but let's assume you got an electric in your hand, then we can go to the last chord, which is our B minor seven flat five. Don't let the name scare you. That's just what I call it. You could also call it a B half diminished seventh, which I think is actually more confusing. B minor seven flat five. Okay, here's here's the thing. So I'll show you the thing in a second. Okay, let's just get this one down up here, and then I'll do it down here, and I'll show you the thing. Okay. So at the at the we're at the 14th fret now. 14 15 14 15. This is not a bar chord. It's kind of like the C major 7 chord squished up a little bit, okay? And that's the last one. Okay, I'm not going to write, but in first position down here, we can play it X 2 3 2 3 X. And that would be 
B minor seven. Uh, let's see, flat five is how I would write that on a chart for a band or whatever. B minor seven flat five. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Remember, this is D minor seven, right? This is E minor seven. Remember that? That was the second chord. If I slide this down to B seven or B, that's a B minor seven chord. Remember, any any bar chord we learn. You're learning 12 chords because it's movable. This is not just C major seven. This is C sharp major seven and D major seven and E flat major seven and E major. You've learned 12 chords. That's the beauty of bar chords. I love open chords. Don't get me wrong, but the beauty of bar chords is that you are learning so much. And I love to 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 squeeze as much knowledge or uh, as much information out of the smallest piece of knowledge. And that's what we're doing here. Okay. So we took this D minor seven chord. This was the two chord or the three chord in the key of C. And if we just keep going down, that's D flat minor seven, or more likely C sharp minor seven, C minor seven, and B minor seven. Okay, now you've been learning theory, you've been learning chord theory. So we know the the note names of these. We know this is the root, this is the fifth, this is the seventh, and this is the third. Right. So what do we? What if we take this fifth and we flat it? So instead of having B minor seven, we had B minor seven with a flatted fifth. It would be this. Look at that. That's our chord. That's how we came across that chord. That's how I came across that name. To me, that makes more sense to think this than to try to memorize that that's a half diminished seventh chord. Okay, does that make sense? And it's a cool chord, dude. Um, it's a it's a very very common chord in jazz. Very common in jazz. It's not very common in pop music. I'm trying to think. I did a, where's the, the Bieber guy? There's one guy that follow that watches sometimes. He's a Bieber fan. He's always getting, trying to get me to show him how to do songs. <laughs> and I won't do it because they're not released yet. Because <laughs> they're kind of secret. But there's one that I did that where I actually, I don't, is there a, I'm trying to think. Uh, ETA. Has a B diminished, or, you know, has a D diminished, a D sharp diminished. Uh, chord in it, or B diminished chord in it. So I did put a diminished seventh chord in a Bieber song. Um, when I was, uh, when, when we wrote Yellow Raincoat, that, that song has, uh, that I did with Justin, that song has major sevenths and has major ninths and minor ninths and all sorts of jazz chords in it. So, so anyway, yeah, so that's, so here's, here's our screenshot. You can take a screenshot, but I want you to copy this and do this on your own. I want you to try to play through these. I know some of them are hard. The bar chords are hard. The further you go up the net, the easier it gets. If you're an acoustic guitar player and you can go out and get like a $50 to $100 Squire Strat or something, you know I have a million of those. I love them because I like to mess with them and change the tunings and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you can at least have something that's maybe a little bit easier to play. Maybe put new strings on it or something, but something that's a little bit easier to play than uh, an acoustic guitar for bar chords. Okay. So, so we've got, we've got this. All right. That was the triads on um, with the fifth string in the bass. We got this. And, and so tomorrow, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this, we could either go to ninths on this and add another level, okay? Go one more chord. And I love ninth chords. And there's a couple ninth chords in here we, we would never use. Um, the ninth chord built on the B chord is probably not going to be usable. The ninth chord built on the E is probably not going to be one you'll ever use. Um, uh, I don't really ever get – you'd never get called to do those chords. Um, and then what – then at that point, I might start talking about drop two chords, which is pretty high-level jazz stuff. However, drop two chords afford you the, the, the ability to start to see altered chords, which altered chords are um, flat chords. Uh, like if you see something like this, D7 flat five flat nine, that's that chord. Um, and so if you see that, I, I might lose my audience if I go into this too much because I feel like it's going to be a little bit. But the thing is, it's really just about knowing which note is the fifth and which note is the ninth. And then you know that a flat five means go down a fret and a sharp five means go up a fret. Um, and the same thing with the nine, a flat nine means go down a fret and a flat, a sharp nine means go up. A so we got, there's, it's, it, 
a pretty darn easy chord to play. And that's a D and I'm not playing a D in it. There's a D, but I'm assuming I have a bass player because we're playing jazz. All right. But <laughs> you don't need to put the root in a, in a, chord, in a jazz context necessarily because um, you're playing with a band or a bass player. If you're not playing with a bass player, then you have to probably play it like this. Um, but basically all I'm doing is playing a, a D nine chord. This is the ninth. This is the fifth. And I need a sharp nine and a sharp fifth. So I just move those two notes up and I get this. If I want to flat them, I move those two down and I get that. And it's like, whoa, it's cool. And so that's why I like to drop few chords because when I'm playing jazz in a, in a, in a jazz context, um, you know, I'm. Those are all drop two chords. Um, and I'm, what I'm doing there is I'm combining the chord um, with the melody to create what's called a chord melody. Like when I was doing, when I would mess around with them. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm—that's the melody. So, but I need a—I need some kind of B flat chord, B flat seven. But I altered it, and then I altered it again, and then I go to the the, the melody note, and it's an E flat. So, yeah, misty exactly. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking the melody, making sure it's the top note of every chord I'm playing. And that directs the listener's ear to hear the melody, but still you're hearing the harmony. And then some guys that are really good, they can play melody, harmony, and a bass line apart from that. I mean, there are a lot, a lot of guys uh, that um, guys and gals that kill that style. And I, you know, it was something I wanted to do when I was 14 years old because I couldn't find a band. So I thought, well, then I'll be the band and I'll do everything by myself. So um, let's see, uh, Diane, are you still there? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Dan hasn't shouted for uh, story time yet. And I, I'm, I'm like, I don't, I didn't have a story. I didn't, I didn't reference anything I need to tell a story about. I am not going to tell my most horrific junior high moment. I already told you my second most horrific junior high moment. That was a couple days ago. Yeah. Chet Atkins is great at that kind of stuff, Bruce. Um, uh, Chet Atkins, but you know, like Joe Pass, if you check out Joe Pass, uh, his book, his, his record virtuoso, I mean, just go to, just go to um, Spotify and check out Joe Pass. Uh, for Duo, so such a great record. Um, I got that when I was a kid and I would transcribe thing and he would do stuff like, and I need a better sound than I've got right now. That sound is just still too gainy. Let me pull up another sound. Um, maybe this one's better. I don't know. Let's see sound. Where are you? Pat Metheny sound. I got to turn off the delay. Oh, yeah, turn off the delay. I don't know if this is going to be any better. It seems like it's really gaining for some reason. Uh, but but uh, Joe Pass would do this thing like if he were playing, um, if you were playing Missy, he might go. You know, and then. You know, he would do stuff like that where he just like plays the melody for a second, then solos, and then plays the melody for a second, and solos, and plays them, and whatever chord. Oh, okay. I will check it out. Give, give me a master's opinion. You know, I don't know. Uh, man, I know Zitches. Everybody take a drink. Cheers. Okay. I do have a story, but it's not my story. I'm going to tell you someone else's story. Well, uh, Walter knows this person. I don't know if he knows this story, but I read this this friend of mine. Uh, his name is Caleb Quay, and he wrote an autobiography. He has a very, very interesting life. 
He's from London. And uh, he, he tells this story in the book, and I talked to him about it afterwards because I read <laughs> Sip. <laughs> yeah, Glug. Um, the uh, do oh, would I need an interface to use ProLogic software? Yes, you will need some kind of interface. Uh, um, who is it? M M. But there, but you can get you can get. Um, interfaces, you can get one channel interfaces. I think Apogee makes a, I like Apogee converters. So that's why I use Apogee. Um, but I think that I use a two channel converter. I don't, you don't need, you don't need 24, out, you know, channels because you're not, rec unless you're planning on building a studio and recording bands and stuff, you don't need 24 channels of inputs. You just need one or two. I have two in case I ever want to go stereo on a microphone for acoustic, or if I'm bringing my rig in, my rig is stereo, but I don't use my rig anymore. I use everything in the box. So I just need one input for my guitar. I could probably make one input workable. Um, but like an Apogee Uno, I think it's called, is probably two, three, four hundred bucks, something like that. Um, let me look it up. In fact, if you want, um, <laughs> I can send you, uh, I'll find it on Amazon and I can send you an Amazon link with my code in it. And you guys, I see that you are buying stuff through my Amazon links. God bless you, because I do make money from that. That that helps. I mean, that adds to the monthly income. I kid you not. It's um, it really helps. So I really appreciate it. Um, let's see, one. Oh, it's just an Apogee One is what it's called. Um, yeah. Let's see. So I think Apogee. I think you can pretty much use. Why is this not opening in another window? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think you can pretty much use, who's the seller? I don't know who the seller is on this, if it's Amazon. Uh, but here's the here's the link. You don't need to buy it from this link or anything. You can buy it from you know Sweetwater or somebody like that if you want. Uh, this is three, it's $300. Um, so that's just one channel. You might consider getting something that's two channels. But um, anyway, oh, the links, uh, Bruce, they're all on my videos generally after I... Uh, if you look at the description of my videos, there's links to like guitar picks and um, uh, strings and things like that. However, you you don't need to buy that pick. If you click on that link, it opens up a new window and you do your shopping. And that's what people are doing. Uh, if you do your shopping, then um, I get I get a percentage of the total sale, which is awesome. Uh, just for the recommendation for the uh, it's called being an Amazon affiliate. And if you're doing anything like this, I highly recommend it. I think you can find a link for for uh, at the bottom of the Amazon page for Amazon affiliates. You can sign up. You could even create a page just so that you go to to do all your Amazon shopping. So you get because sometimes it's as much as five percent. People, somebody spends five thousand or a thousand dollars at Amazon. I I could make fifty bucks. In fact, I have. Um, for some reason, I've had three people buy loots on uh, my loot review. They bought five, I sold three loots, and it's like forty bucks every time. So. It's pretty cool, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, two channel interface, Verdi. You're gonna, you probably want two channels just in case you want to go stereo, or if you want to record two guitar players, um, if you want to have two mics, if you want to do a singer and a guitar. Two is two is the minimum I think I could really do with. I've toyed with getting four. Uh, Apogee has something I think called a quattro, and it's four channels. Um, I don't really have any need to go eight. There are better ones. Um, the higher, really expensive converters. I, I, I've not, I'm not getting complaints from my clients uh, about quality of my files. So at this point, I mean, they're all recording that, you know, I basically recording at 48 or 44 or one sometimes I, very rarely, but I'll have clients request 96. Uh, but all, all, all of them can do 96. It's actually there. 192 is the, is kind of the goal, the platinum standard. And that's way over the top. Okay, so I was telling you about my friend, uh, Caleb Quay. When Caleb Quay was a young boy, when he was in like high school, he lived in London. He had a job as a runner for Dick James Music. And Dick James Music was the publisher for the Beatles. But it, they were publisher for a lot of people. And publishing back in the 60s and 50s and 40s even was largely publishing sheet music, Right. So they would they made money. They made most of their money off of sheet music that people would buy of a hit song that they would buy and they play it on piano. They still do this. There's probably sheet music for ETA, which is hilarious. I should buy it. 
I should, I, I would love to have a copy of that. That'd be pretty cool. But um, so that was the big thing. And, and keep in mind, the sheet music had to be created and released around the same time, if not the same time as the album. Um, so when part of Caleb's job was bringing master tapes from studios to Dick James, to their transcribers, so they could transcribe it, work out piano arrangements, you know, do the, the crazy, like, I don't even know how they did it back in the old days. The, the, um, I, I would love to see, uh, what's it called when they do the, like newspaper, they put it in the giant thing and then they couldn't stamp it. Uh, what's that called? I like, I think it's Pika or something like that, but it, it's, uh, anyway, when they created music, I don't, I'm like, how did they do that when they printed music on paper and they used it, you know, they had to actually make the, 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 uh, core anyway, it's crazy. So that was his job. Well, so one day, um, uh, Dick James tells, tells, uh, Caleb to go to Abbey road studios and pick up the master from a record that's just finished there and bring it right over to us so that, um, we can transcribe it. And he goes over there and it's, it's the Beatles <laughs> and it's a master for one of the Beatles albums. So he, instead of taking it right to Dick James, he takes it home, but he picks up his, he picks up his friend Reggie on the way and he and Reggie sit there in, <laughs> in his living room. Cause he had a reel to reel tape. He put the real, the master from this Beatles record, and they listened from the beginning to the end of, of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. They were the first people to ever hear this record. He and Reggie, and Reggie became El Elton John. And Caleb went on to, to tour with Elton John as his guitar player. <laughs> so, um, And it's funny because uh, Walter mentioned Pee Wee Hill earlier in the stream. Pee Wee is the bass player of my, and Pee Wee plays with, uh, with, to this day, plays with, Caleb. Caleb does jazz stuff now. But Caleb uh, was living in a mansion in Beverly Hills and lost everything to cocaine. Lost all his gigs, lost everything he owned. I think a, a first wife even, maybe, I don't know uh, for a fact that, but he lost everything. And he, he was working for Pee Wee as a house painter. <laughs> so then he became a pastor. And I kid you not, he actually was a pastor of a church in Pasadena and they had a need for a new PA system. And Elton John bought them a brand new, really nice PA system for their church. Super nice guy. Um, and Caleb and Elton, I guess, still talk every now and then. But man, uh, so anyway, it's getting, no, not microfilm, not microfiche. Uh, what was it called? It's, you know, when they make the, when, they, when we, I print shop, when we did print shop in junior high and high school, we had to make, I made my own business cards. And you had to set the spaces in and letters in and everything. What is that called? David, you know this. Dave, David's probably gone tending to his parents. He's got much more important things to do. All right. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna take off. Um, and tomorrow, what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna go ahead and and do this all over again, but we're gonna go ahead and, and do the ninth chords. Okay. I hope it's not too dry. Um, maybe what we'll do is I'll quickly get to this point, okay. And we'll add the ninth chords, and then I'll teach you some ninth chords. So we'll learn some fingerings for some ninth chords. So you can start uh, to actually play ninth chords um, on the fretboard. So we can try to do a lesson where I'm doing the theoretical and the application in the same lesson, okay? And then remember, if uh, if you can, um, do I, is that? No, that's the Amazon thing. Typesetting. That's it, Verdi. You knew it. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, Verdi, and, and you know what? Um, you can get a two-channel, uh, you know, Apogee's like the, I wouldn't say they're expensive, but I think it's 600 bucks for the duet that I have. Um, but I think they're, ch they're definitely cheaper ones. Um, and they're better ones out there too. They're people that swear by the UA. The UA is really good, but I think it's more expensive. Um, and so for as far as an interface for your computer to use Pro Tools or Logic or any of the other Studio One, um, you can totally... Uh, get something for probably two, $300 for two channels. Um, and what you should do is when the weather gets better, do a yard sale. Yeah, Walter knows Caleb very well. He's an amazing guitar player. Yeah, see. Oh, he's got, that's right. He's got a ton of stories with Eric Clapton too. Uh, that's that's really cool. I'm sure that, yeah, that's, I would love to hear Caleb talk about that. I've, I've met Caleb many, many times, seen him many, many times. Uh, and uh, um, 
Anyway, so let's see. Uh, okay, good night, everybody. Uh, looks like everybody's starting to sign off. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know where we peaked at. I'll turn off the stream and leave the live chat up so you guys can continue to say goodbye. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, and we'll uh, pick up where we left off. And now i got to figure out where we're going to go from here. Uh, but we're probably going to do some drop two stuff. So uh, don't worry. That's going to be fairly not as difficult as you think. Actually, you're going to your light bulbs are going to go off and you're going to be able to have uh, understanding that you didn't think you'd ever have. So hopefully we're going to get there soon. Bye bye.